Will our next honoree, Asan Hawk, please join me? Asan <laughs> graduated in 2004 from Penn State Barron with a degree in computer engineering. He subsequently earned a, P a Master of Computer Engineering and PhD at the University of Memphis and MIT, respectively. Asan is an assistant professor of computer science at University of Rochester, where he directs the Rochester Human Computer Interactive Lab. If you've seen the blockbuster HBO hit Westworld or the Academy Award winner L. Makina, you might think human computer interactions are terrifying. However, Asan's research uses computers named Mock and Lisa to help train people to excel in social situations. Inspired by his brother with Down syndrome, Asan's research was the first of its kind to demonstrate that it's possible for people to learn and improve their social skills by interacting with a conversational computer system. A former professor of Asan's wrote, in my 24 years of service to Penn State, I cannot think of any of our graduates more deserving of this honor. I'm pleased to honor Asan Hawk with the Alumni Achievement Award. Can anyone guess my graduation GPA from Penn State? Any guesses? It would be really arrogant of me to ask this question if I really graduate with 4.0. <laughs> think low. <laughs> Any other guesses? Think high. <laughs> so it's around 3.0. And if you're wondering, what is this guy doing here with such a low GPA? Um, I will answer that question with a series of stories today. So I started my Penn State journey at Penn State York. Um, Reflecting back on my freshman year, I noticed that physics and I did not get along, <laughs> but I did get along with the professor who taught it, Dr. Abul Hassan, who is here today, who drove all the way from Penn State, York. Thank you. So after three semesters at York, I came to University Park, and I wanted to study computer science. At the time, computer science was a control major, so you'd have to have a GPA of 3.2 to be able to get it. And I had a close to 4.0 GPA at the time, so I wasn't too worried. But in terms of the formality, I had to go to a website, Angel, I think, where you have to go and maintain your <laughs> portal. You have to go and maintain your portal, and you have to mention the th your three top choice. The first choice was computer science, and I didn't care about the second and third choice. And at the bottom, there was a small submit button that I didn't notice, I didn't, never clicked. So the College of Engineering came back to me and told me, you cannot study computer science. In case you're wondering why I research on human-computer interaction, now you know why. <laughs> so I was disappointed, uh, but I wasn't discouraged. Then I started looking into what other options do I have within Penn State. Then I noticed there is a great four-year program in Penn State Barron where I could get my four-year degree in computer engineering. So I wrote to the chair of the program at the time, Dr. Ralph Ford, who is now the chancellor of Penn State Barron, who is here as well. <laughs> so he sent me a nice note. Well, you know, you should come here. You know, you're welcome. So the very next day, I just packed all my stuff to a car and drove to Erie. <laughs> now, I arrived in Erie, a barren campus, in an odd semester. That means the classes that, that were available, I did not have the prerequisite for it. So one option is to wait for a semester and graduate after one year, or take the classes without the prerequisite. So I was young and foolish, so you can imagine what I did. I took the classes without the prerequisite. And that was a lot of struggle. I was working harder than most of the students in the class and still struggling to get a B. And just to reflect on it, um, in the, then when I went to grad school at MIT, the classes were also very hard, but I did not struggle. There is one thing that Penn State taught me that really helped me to pass through the class. Can anyone guess what that is? 
Any guesses? It was resilience. Um, your ability to go from one failure to another without losing your motivation. <laughs> so going back to the Penn State experience, in my fourth year, I realized that I really love computer emotion, you know, human emotion and using computer to recognize it. And at the time, there was no courses that are offered to do this. So Dr. Ford offered an independent study where I could take the class and learn on my own. And that was my first baby step towards research. And after graduation, uh, I, the, the class was done and I graduated, but the work wasn't done. Um, so I did not apply for a high paying job. I took a job in a call center environment called West in Erie where the pay was low and the job sucked so that I could <laughs> come back at night and have a motivation to do more research under Dr. Ford. So I, we worked on it and he helped me to write my first paper and he provided funding to go to California to present it. And at the time I just knew I just wanted to get into research and that's how my career took off. So on a concluding remark, I just wanna say that, um, at least for me, uh, life took a punch at me more often than I would like. Uh, and I spend more time lying on the ground than really standing up. But when I was lying on the ground, I made every effort to get up. Uh, that's what a good education system does to you. Uh, that's what Penn State did to me. Thank you.